pretty cool set from them so far. I think probably my favorite set of the, the day to this point. Yeah, it was pretty, it was, honestly, it was pretty good. Yeah. It's a well-fought set. So we have uh, Time Bones returning, the Genesis 6 champion. And uh, we know him as a Roy main, which is very interesting. A Roy so. player. <laughs> main, you know. uh, but we have him against uh, Ostentatious. It's actually a pretty interesting Atlantic South clash, because Ostentatious, is, um, he's been kind of our, I, I don't want to say like PR guardian, but he's been you know mi middling in our PR for quite a while. Um, He's not a. He's just been doing. He's been doing pretty well for for a long yes. time. With the thing. He hasn't quite beaten the people in the upper echelon. He hasn't quite caused his way there, but he's been very very solid, and able to challenge them sometimes. To put it into like sort of perspective. I am not a history know everybody type of commentator. I know Ostentatious actually. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I, like yeah. I've seen him play before. Really strong Sheik okay, player. Cool. Um, Sheik Marth, both. Uh, he, play, he does play Sheik, right? Yeah, he's okay, a Sheik okay. main, but he also plays Peach. He also plays. Right, right. Uh, Mar he played Marth a little bit. Maybe I remember seeing it in uh, Teams Friendlies or something. Mm. But yeah, I know him as a Sheik player. <coughs> um, really strong, like we said. It'll be interesting to see uh, how he matches up against Time Bones, because yeah. I personally haven't seen this matchup before. Yeah, me neither. It'd be, um, okay. it'd be pretty interesting. Time Bones has a couple of Sheik players in North Carolina, but mm -hmm. uh, ha Georgia having been directly influenced by you know Drug Fox Sheik uh, when he was entering tournaments and things like that, uh, the Sheiks all play uh, a different way than I think some of the other regions. So we'll see. Yeah, it's interesting how uh, like one top player can sort of shape the play styles of an entire region. Um, and I mean, any character can be played a variety of ways. Uh, even play, even characters that are you know traditionally thought of to have like one big strength. You take like ice climbers are known to wobble. Not all of them are just wobble monsters looking for grabs. Of yeah. course, it's a part of their arsenal, um, but it's not always the case. You have someone like Jigglypuff. They're not all going to be like poking safely. Some of them do lunge in deep with their aerial. Oh group. yeah, yeah. And not all sheiks are going to just. Run forward, wave dash back, and space fairs. There's actually a lot of things you can do with a character like this. Sheik's actually um, one of the hidden, really sick characters in Melee. I think the public perception of Sheik has been sort of shifting thanks to plop and things like that. Yes. Um, Sheik's honestly a lot of really cool things you can do with that character. I think the thing with Sheik is uh, I always say there's like an innate way that most people want to play a character when they pick them up. Um, Sheik's like really short dash, inability to dash dance that effectively. Um, the lack of like an approaching aerial, the way she floats around, makes it so it doesn't seem like you can really like, you can't go directly in, but she can still very often, I mean, using the platforms, of course. Right. Um, and also on the ground with these like lengthy normals, be able to sort of like take a lot of space, take control, and sort of like predict the movements of your opponent and uh, lock them down. I think that's a really cool style. Yeah. It's and like, that's kind of the way ostentation plays, right? A little bit, so. Yeah, sort of. He, um uh, he does like to do the, the box them in so that he can actually effectively reach them, things like that. Yes. Uh, one thing I say about when I'm telling people how to play against Sheik, we have very few Sheiks in my region. Uh -oh. um, a lot of times the matchup's less about what your character can do and more about what Sheik can't do. Yeah, because yeah. Sheik's dash attack, yeah. it's like in her body, not in her arms, right? right. Um, the grab's not, I mean, the grab is threatening because of what it can do, but uh, her lunge distance isn't that great. And so a lot of the times you can box in Sheik and sort of keep her from hitting you. It's a lot of don't get hit against this character. Yeah, because Sheik doesn't have an easy way, like you said, to, to land a, a blow, right? Not very good at approaching and things like that, at least directly. Oh, no. Early SD. Ostentatious knows that it's just the first stock. Snaps himself back into it very quickly. This matchup conventionally thought of to be, um, I say conventionally, I mean historically, thought of as Sheik favorite. These days, people don't uh, all think that way. Yeah, it's one of those things where as the game has developed, uh, you know, Sheik's sort of difficulty uh, dealing with Martha at low percent, you know, dealing with his ground game because he's just that much quicker than her, uh, kind of has skewed the matchup sometimes in Mart's favor even. Yeah, with, and with I, think it's, I think it's one of those things where uh, we're talking about how the way people like to innately play characters. The like way that a Marth wants to play when you're someone who plays against a lot of foxes or falcos or falcons or whatever, yeah, um, is not the way that will give you a lot of success versus Sheik. Um, whereas Sheik's like normal combo structures, the way that Sheik likes to play, does have pretty good success against Marth. So you do have to right. have a fair amount of matchup knowledge on the Marth side in order to come out on top. Grabs the ledge again. Yeah, dude, Time Bones has been. Making sure Ostentatious doesn't have a chance on stage. Yeah, and I mean, it's Ostentatious has kind of been putting himself there. Yeah. Um, so that's that's really been the story of the game. Ostentatious kind of putting himself in bad positions a little bit, um, and then just being executed very quickly. And the thing about this game is it's very unforgiving. So you put yourself in a bad position and someone can execute, your stock is just over. You know, it's not. Sometimes you don't take 50 damage, you're just done. Yeah, and you can see some some of the, some of the decisions from Ostentatious haven't been like that awful or anything like that. Yes. It's just that you know Time Bones has been that sharp about it. Yeah, exactly. It's like he finds himself slightly off balance and Time Bones just executes. Yeah. 
We'll see. Austin Dish is, um, has been doing all right otherwise, you know, except for when he throws himself off stage in a bad spot. Yeah, I mean, I thought, I didn't think Mark was going to make it back. I thought that was an excellent edge guard uh, attempt from Ostentatious. Uses the needles, grabs the ledge. Oh, and he got it himself that time. All right. Oof. This is now. So I still think Ostentatious is very much capable of winning this set. Um, it's now a question of mental composure. Right, right. Uh, that was an SD and like three assisted SDs kind of yeah. game. Uh, time Bones, of course, playing very solid. Um, Putting himself in positions where he's safe and it's possible for Ostentatious to mess up. If you give someone enough rope, they might hang themselves. Yeah. Um, and that's the way that game went. Well, see, Ostentatious taking a bit of a breather, you know, drinking some water, kind of getting his head back uh, in the game. He's also wearing a Genesis shirt, actually. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, wow. He was part of the, the, the CSL, or now CSL, but uh, TMG back then, the squad that made it to... Uh, the finals. Uh, my college is one of those touched by TMG. Oh. Uh, it's really good for the melee scene and really good for people. Like uh, talking about it with one of my uh, cohorts back then, uh, Yuan. Uh, there's a lot of kids out there in college who don't go out on Friday nights and they'd probably just be sitting around the weekend. Mm. But you give them a tournament to go to or a team to practice with um, and a little bit of social interaction and something that they like and it makes a big difference for these kids. So it's super nice from uh, TMG. Yeah. Or I guess CSL, whatever you like to call it these days. I think CSL is also here uh, this weekend. So, yeah, shout outs to them. Yeah, we're seeing uh, Time has been very proficient at, at dealing with a lot of the kind of more standard cheek stuff, or now standard cheek stuff, right? He's been super sharp on the edge guarding. Wow. Uh, he's been catching uh, off stations and spots where cheek likes to spot dodge, things like that. Ooh. Yeah, super sharp, definitely the right word. Yeah, the punishes have been good. I like the zoning there. Time Bones was like really afraid to come forward. Ostentatious ends up converting it into a stock. Yeah, this, the way this is going is kind of in the opposite of the last one too. Yeah. Um, where Ostentatious is just playing solid. You know, he's not putting himself in those awkward spots this time. Wow, that was the fastest smash of all time. Jeez. I guess if you live in a state with sharks, you're gonna probably have to be able to match that fast. <laughs> that guy's pretty good. Oh. And, uh, it's been a kind of a tale of Ostentatious getting close enough to uh, Time Bones and not really letting him out. Charges some needles, kind of threatens to throw needles on the way down. I think that's interesting because it like coerces Time Bones to go a little bit lower on the recovery, uh, which gives Ostentatious a better chance to secure the edge guard. Oh no. Oh, makes it back. Enough delay that the poof ends up hitting uh, Time Bones. The poof is the technical term, believe it or not. Hopefully that's in the uh, the, the, the book. <laughs> the poof. Yeah, the, the, the guidebook. Oh, the, all right, so guess what they've named that technique? Because Sheik's OP is called Vanish, right? Yeah. Guess what the Sheik means have named that technique? Uh, I, I have no clue. A Vanish gliding, which sounds super vanish cool. Vanish gliding? It wow. sounds so cool. You know, this, this like, ninja thing she has yeah. going on, it definitely attracts that type of player that would call it Vanish Gliding. <laughs> so it just kind of fits. The type of player that would be at this convention also. Yes. Yeah. Someone who likes Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, Chaos Man, you know, he was on that, that, <laughs> that panel. Uh, that's, a, that's a Donkey Kong player for sure. Oh. I think, uh, um, yeah, he thought Ostentatious just jump, but Ostentatious not opting for the... Uh, the Omsa tech, usually he's pretty pretty good about that too. Mm -hmm. So good delay by Time Bones, I suppose. And I also really like the wavelength on the recovery. All of a sudden, Time Bones has a chance to take the set. Only one stock left from Ostentatious. Really solid control. We see him using the platforms like we described before the match. Control the airspace. Yep, a little bit of damage. Crouch cancel, no big deal. You'll take it. Oh, that needle. Oh, he tries to do the crouch cancel. I guess he didn't have the true crouch cancel. Didn't yeah. believe in it. Or maybe, yeah, he tried to release too early. He reacted too early. Oh, okay. finally catches him with that needle. He's been threading that needle, like you said, uh, so often he never actually threw it. So that yeah. just kind of still made it to ledge anyway. Oh, the counter. Wow, that's a big brain counter. That could turn everything around. Goes for a poke, not able to get it. <gasps> oh, Phantom. Oh, no, that would have been a huge combo. Instead, Ostentatious looks like he's about to take game two. We have a game three set. Oh, my God. Off the back that's of that Phantom. Crazy. I don't know if that Phantom would have led to anything. Now that I'm thinking about it more, I feel like probably not except a juggle. But it would have been a good spot for, yeah. for Time Bones. He would have had control of the game uh, in, that, in that moment. Wow, 
Wow, and he almost got the poke off stage. There are, there are a bunch of close calls for time bones, just winning the set outright right there. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, so uh, Austin just banned Yoshi's. Looks like the choice is FD. Uh, we saw Ostentatious. I think this might be even a better choice. Ostentatious made great use of the platforms and the ladder stocks to uh, control the corner. And, uh, you know, you can't do that on FD because there are no platforms. Yeah. It's um, one of the things, though, uh, Drugflux has also changed the perception of all our Sheik, all the Georgia Sheiks, like how this matchup is. Because usually this is traditionally, you know, Marth wins on this stage, most matchups. That's what I've heard. Uh, but it, Sheik kind of does the same thing to Marth that Marth does to Sheik, right? Where if Marth's in the air, it's pretty hard for him to actually get down from the air. Yeah, this is something where I think uh, over time, this is also flattening a little bit because it is difficult to juggle with Sheik a little bit because her aerial acceleration and aerial drift is so... Uh, Minor, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but it's possible, and it is a, it is a strong technique. And then as cheeks get better, and they learn to you know dash under the spot, wait a little bit longer before putting out the aerial, uh, they're gonna get better at juggling too. But it's just so much easier for Marth. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, it gets to the other side. F smashes him off. It's gonna be a rinse and repeat edge guard. Well, nice trick there by Ostentatious, you know, er upping early mm -hmm. and then just going flying straight on stage. Oh my God. Yeah, prediction to tips. That was sick. Smooth move from Time Bones. Runs out the invincibility from Ostentatious. I love when someone cuts a needle. I think it's really funny. <laughs> wow. He shows his double jump. He's often not to use it yet. Lots of damage. I like that he waited with shield at the bottom, trying to punish a uh, move coming down. Players love acting on their way down. Yeah. Especially Mars, honestly. Yes. Yeah, Mars. Well, the forward are so good for it. The trick is when you're behind them, the far air is not going to hit. <laughs> or if you're, if they're, oh my god. And that, actually, I was going to mention that that's one of the things that kind of changed the Sheik's perception matchup, too. On the down throw, lots of times Mars thinks that if they, if they DI uh, uh, slightly behind, they can just escape the down throw uh, follow up situation at low percents. But uh, you can get a guaranteed tipper up smash there, Sheik, and it kills at like 70 something. Yeah, with like a little micro dash, right? Like yeah. we saw. So that's a really good use of his tools. Ostentatious uh, did have the lead, about tied up from time bounds. See what he can do with the invincibility advantage. All oh, goes to the read. But he does the crouch cancel read. So it's a read, and then a read on what the punish of the read is going to be. The two-layered read. Counter, counter read. Yeah, counter. Trying to scoop him off the ground with the down tilt. Get up attack from Time Bones, gets him out. I think it's also from Ostentation. He's kind of slowing down the pace a little bit, um, pulling back. He's in the lead, so he's going to force Time Bones to eat some needles. He okay, oh. dashes away. See what the punish is. I like the rising forward air. Oh, the catch. Ostentation hasn't quite been able to... Oh. Uh, sliced. Good DI, but does not end up uh, living. He has been able to catch the um, the side B from Time Bones when he's in the air. Hasn't quite been ready for it. Yeah, it'll certainly help him get a lot more edge guards or uh, continue a juggle. He went out of smash again, but he missed the up smash input. Yeah, it seems like it's pretty tight. It's not something you see from everybody. Trying the up tilt again. That is difficult, or... Uh, that's something you're going to want to research if you're Marth. It's partially port dependent. If you can get the up tilt on Sheik off of up throw, uh, definitely de percent dependent, the eye dependent. A lot of factors go into whether or not you're going to hit that up tilt. A lot of times, uh, I'd say just go for up air or fair. Oh. <laughs> uh, they are whiffing. That's one of those things also we mentioned, you know, uh, Sheik's, while her normal moves and stuff are good against Marth in general, also the way she contorts her body a lot of the time, yeah, dodges yeah. Marth's moves kind of naturally. She's also one of the uh, characters that makes the Z-axis the most relevant because oh. of the way she moves around. Wow, yeah. Time Buds with a dare. Doesn't finish it off just yet. Yeah, I mean, uh, congratulations to Time Buds for winning that set. It was a tight one. Yeah. Uh, ostentatious, though, recovering very strongly from what was uh, an yeah, ugly first was... game, right? Um, I do think that Ostentatious did what he could to make FD workable. Um,